Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where psychopathic criminals break the law in the name of their precious, precious children. I'm a 21-year-old female babysitter, and I have this girl, let's call her Mia, whom I watch at least once a week, plus whenever the parents ask me to help out. Mia is eight now, and I started babysitting her when she was four months. Yes, I was 14 at the time. The family is great, and Mia is a really, really easy kid. We are like sisters. I never rose my rate, so keep in mind that I have been working for £1.50, about a buck seventy per hour for roughly 8 years, and could expect a £20 gift card for both my birthday and Christmas. I'm a babysitter for fun, not for money, and I'm true to that. What I earn just about covers expenses. I have an actual job that's paying for my life after all. When Mia is with me for an entire Saturday, we go on day trips. She loves shopping and sightseeing, so I mostly take her around to bigger cities. This is where the story starts. We are on the bus on an hour drive to the next bigger city. Taking the car meant stress for me as I don't like driving and the train was more expensive. Though both would have been a 30 to 40 minute ride, me and I like to go by bus. The private bus company has perks. On this particular day, I paid 10 pounds for a return ticket. Mia being under 10 years old went for free. Plus they wait for you on the way back, but causing delays results in fees. Anyway, we are on the bus as per usual. I brought my old Nintendo DSi for her to play with. I can do whatever, she plays happily, it's a win. Until this entitled mom and her 10 year old boy come along. They take the seats right behind ours. No problem, right? Wrong. It doesn't take long for the boy to notice the console and the racing game Mia was somewhat fixated on. Boy to entitled mom. Mom, I wanna play. Entitled mom, well, go ahead. I thought he would like get our attention and ask nicely, Nope. The boy jumps up from his seat, reaches over Mia's lean, and tries to snatch the game from above. He gets hold of it for a moment, but the hand strap stops him. I made sure Mia's wrist was fine and the game not broken from the rough move. Then I turn around, stopping the boy from another attempt. Young man, that wasn't nice. He just wants to play. Let him play too. Teach your child to ask properly and I will consider. Don't tell me how to parent, kid. Mom, I want that game. In a minute, sweetie. No, it's not yours, and I'm asking you to leave us alone. I sit back down, hoping to have heard the end of it. Way wrong. Mia's seat shakes a few times. The boy is kicking her seat. She asks him to stop. He continues. I warned the mom I would tell the drivers. There are always two on the bus, just in case. He is bored. Give him the game and he will stop. I immediately get up, quickly help Mia change into another row, then go to the front and explain the situation when I hear Mia yelling, let go. I turn around. This boy has one hand on the game and the other pulling her hair. Entitled mom is smirking in satisfaction as the boy rips the hand sling off Mia and returns to his seat holding the game. I immediately storm at him and grab it back without a word. He starts crying and screaming loudly. I don't care. It's 8 a.m. This was supposed to be a happy girl's day out. Now I had Mia in tears and a bratty son with his entitled mom on my hands. You give that back right now. My son was playing with it. Bus driver two comes to our rescue, practically pushed the woman and her son into the last row, asking us to take seats up front to separate us as far as possible. Entitled mom was advised to use some common sense that this was not her game and thus not hers to decide over. I didn't quite listen anymore but heard something from the lines of, My son only wanted to try the game. These girls were unfairly rude to him. I demand an apology. I hide my hand and give her the finger. Not that Entitled mom could see. Mia snickers. Whoops, my bad. Mia saw. But Mia was already smiling and starting the game again. Fast forward to the end of a successful shopping spree. We were signed for the last bus back, 7 p.m. departure and 10 minutes early. I let Mia choose the seats as per usual, pretty much up front. There were two couples waiting already and a third arriving with us. All seemed fine until the driver, I noticed that we're the same drivers again, announced we couldn't leave. Two people were missing, but they would call them to either hurry to the bus or decline their seats. It would just be a few more minutes. Or not. We had to wait for them. Company policy. 7.35 p.m. My nightmare comes true. Entitled mom and son walk up to the bus, not hurrying at all, ice cream cones in hand. No messy food on the bus. They have to finish outside. Again, not hurrying in any way. 7.45 p.m. Head count. We finally drive back. Everyone on board is annoyed by the delay. Entitled mom and son probably took the seats in the other aisle, yet right behind us on purpose, but I wasn't going to say anything yet. Lesson learned, I hoped. Bus driver two is driving now. Driver one comes up to the mom. 
Ma'am, sorry to bother you, but you caused a 45 minutes delay and according to our terms and conditions, the company will fine you for that. Fine me? What, for a few minutes? No way, I was told there would be a ride home waiting for us and that's it. I'm sorry, but you knew that beforehand. It is in our terms and conditions. No one told me that. You agree to it, ma'am. The company will mail you everything. I need your ID, please. No. I'm afraid I will have to involve police then. He goes back into his seat. The boy shows up next to me. Boy, I want that game. I told you no this morning, it's still no. He pulls a sad face but goes back to his mom. It's semi-dark outside. Mia is lying spread over her seat and my lap. Not that I cared. She was tired and I expected her to fall asleep while playing. And she did, face buried in my jacket that she had folded like a pillow on my lap. I turned the game off but with the sling on Mia's wrist. I can't put it away. Entitled mom suddenly hovers above me. She is done playing. So? My son can play now. No, he can't. It's my game. Come on, just give it to him. He wants it and you are too old for it anyway. I don't care. It's my game. I said no, so please leave me alone now. What gives you the right? She's practically yelling. I'm worried she might wake Mia and that I could end up with a cranky, tired child. I own it. Do me a favor and don't wake her. She is asleep. She doesn't need the game now. Ma'am, the game is tied to her wrist. I would have to wake her to get it and in any way I would be playing it then, not your son. It is my game and if I have to tell you again I will ask the drivers for help. You know I'll do it. Driver 1 turns around to us, giving her a stern look. I figured he was listening. Entitled mom and son moved a few rows back. I thought she was defeated. Again, I was wrong. A few minutes later, I was occupied with my phone, texting back and forth with a friend. I wasn't paying attention to anything else, but watching Mia didn't fall off the seats whenever she moved. I didn't think much of the tiny hand on my leg at first since Mia's left arm was somewhere around there. Then Mia shoots up with an eardrum shattering scream. I nearly dropped my phone in shock. There is the boy right between my legs. He had crawled up under our seats from behind to come up and probably try to snatch the game. That was his hand on my leg. And Mia had woken up to him staring right into her face mere centimeters away. The driver was cool enough not to cause an accident due to the scream, but stopped the bus as soon as he could. Both drivers were furious. The boy was crying. Entitled Mom is screaming at Mia and I for making him cry, all while I am unable to grasp the situation for a moment, holding the shaking eight-year-old. A man from the other couples gets up and manages to somehow silence the situation entirely. Entitled Mom, this selfish girl scared my baby. She purposely screamed right into his face. Other driver, ma'am, why was your son underneath her seat? I want this girl off the bus now. Ma'am, please answer the question. Why wasn't your son seated? He is a good child. He can do whatever he wants. Boy in tears. I want the game, mommy. Entitled mother towards me. You owe my child that game now, jerk. I ignored the insult. I had to calm Mia, trying not to explode in anger myself. I was so mad I wanted to punch something. The boy tried to reach for the game again. I had had it with him. Admittedly, I didn't want to push him away as hard as I did, and I know I shouldn't have pushed him back at all, but since he only fell against his mother, I couldn't have cared less. I got up, face bright red, taking deep breaths as to not completely lose it. You listen here, kid. Don't you dare to touch us or our game again. You hurt my baby. You better be glad he is underage, ma'am. Otherwise, he would be facing charges right now. Multiple attempts to steal my game, for starters. And the way he crawled up beneath us, I could probably make a sexual assault out of that. Also, Child Protective Services would be very interested to learn you even encouraged your son. Yes, I could have done that to him underage, but let's be honest, he was probably the victim of this woman's miserable parental guidance, and I wasn't going to ruin his life more, though then and there I very much wanted to. You have no right to talk to me like that. Your brat made my baby cry. You owe him that game now. He deserves it. He is a good kid. She wanted to get past me herself now. Behind me, Mia still had the game. I didn't care for the game itself anymore, but she would probably hurt Mia trying to take it. Now, I'm 5'9 and roughly 70 kilograms. I'm one straight noodle and I really don't look like much, but I'm the only girl on an all-male rugby team. I take on guys bigger and older than her, and Mia knows that. She has seen me play. Mia, do your trick. 
My trick. I can throw people over out of a stand pretty bad. That's my standard move, but I couldn't do that now. I had already overreacted pushing the boy. Both drivers and the man held the woman back. She was screaming and thrashing around, throwing punches and insults all over while demanding I gave her son that game. The two other men came to help tame her. It took a while until she gave in and sat down. Finally, I thought once more we could get home. I had already told Mia's mom that we would be back late due to delay, but nothing more since our departure. So I have Mia huddled over the seats again, shaking, but sunken into the game again, and I take my phone out to let her mom know we would be even later. That's when I heard Entitled Mom whisper into her phone. She is obviously telling police some story about a stolen toy, child abuse, being threatened and cornered by several men, and being too scared to ask for an early drop off somewhere around. She was absolutely exaggerating and presenting her own twisted version of the story. I asked Mia to let me up and I go to tell the drivers. They look mortified to say the least and contacted police and their office themselves as well. Now, I had to type that out for Mia's mom as short as possible. I didn't want her to freak out about police at the drop-off since she was coming to pick us up. Fast forward 45 minutes later. Eight cops are waiting for us. An ambulance. Mia's mom who seemed to have introduced herself to police already along with some elderly man who was there to pick up one of the couples. Mia is happy again, which I was overly thankful for. I was scared dead for this to have some traumatic impact on her. It could have been partly my fault for exploding. She had never really been in trouble, hence had never seen me mad. Mia runs up to her mom, I follow with her shopping bag. Entitled mom and son are questioned separately in the ambulance, the rest of us has to answer questions as well. The drivers back us up with the bus surveillance cameras. Entitled mom is busted. Both she and her child are banned to ride with the company. She faces charges for a handful of things, encouraging her son to theft, false accusations, and attacking me among them. At home, Mia proudly presented her new fabrics. I have a sewing machine which we work on on rainy days and shirts. All within the shopping money her mom gave her for the day, I pay for myself. In the end, I got off with a warning for pushing the boy. Entitled mom press charges that were dropped due to the circumstances. The judge figured I was protecting Mia and my property in a heated situation and that the boy's prior actions had made it necessary for me to step in. Entitled mom was fined for the entire delay she and her son had caused, an hour and 18 minutes in total, was ordered to accept family assistance, and child protective services were to look over the family situation as well. Mia wasn't affected in any way. Mia's mother was quite understanding and doubled my Christmas gift card. I guess it was somewhat an apology or thanks. She said it was because I risked charges to protect her daughter and taught her to stand up and be strong. This weekend, we went on another trip. Boarding the bus heading out, I see a boy in line who looks oddly familiar, but the man at his side doesn't. I forget about it. We drive off. Mia smiles widely as I pull the DSi game from my handbag. Two minutes later, the boy. The effing boy. Give me that! Me, unsure if it's really him. How do you ask for things that aren't yours, young man? I want that game! Now! No, sorry. Too rude. Go mind your manners, please. Dad! She won't give it to me again! This bulky man gets up from his seat. To my luck, one of the drivers is driver two from the month before. He recognizes the boy and me. Driver. Young man, I need to see your ID, please. Where is your parent? Father. My son only asked to try the game, sir. Yep, that is why he got banned last month. You have to get off this bus or I will have to call the police. I bought tickets for this. I have the right to drive. Police was called straight away. We stopped. The father got arrested for resisting police and fraud. Turns out both he and his son had signed in under fake names. Also, his son was 11 years old by now and needed a ticket, but was signed as 10 years old and didn't have one. Driver 2 came to me to apologize and see how we were doing. I told him no apology was necessary. I wasn't sure about the boy myself first. I thanked him for resolving the situation immediately. There were a few more kids on the bus this time, and Mia took over the last row with three other kids, sharing the game, taking turns. They had no trouble at all the entire ride through, and I exchanged contacts with their parents. We are going to meet up in a funhouse next week. Friends were made. That's how easy it can be. Honestly though, even on the second ride, had the boy asked nicely, I would have left the choice to Mia whether or not she wanted to share. After all, it could have been an opportunity to make a friend and people deserve second chances if you ask me. But no, they felt like he had the right to have my game because he simply wanted it. He was rude, the parents were worse, I have no bad feelings for getting them kicked off the bus. However, I feel bad for the boy. It wasn't exactly his fault he didn't know better. 
Oh my God, we're gonna have to change the name of this subreddit from Entitled Parents to Entitled Family. The entire family is just a bunch of thieves and criminals. Also, even though this babysitter lost her cool, she still has the patience of a saint. I don't know if I could have handled all that. Let me ask you, if you were sitting in a bus and this happened to you, how would you handle this situation? I'm really curious to know if you would be more patient or less patient than this babysitter. Now on to the next entitled parent. Some context, I have a disability that causes me to have severe balance issues, along with muscle weakness and falls, and while I can still walk, it's unsafe for me to do so. So I use a wheelchair. One day, I needed to go to the supermarket and decided to take my little sister, eight, along with me. I don't see her often as I live out of home, so we made a day of it, going to the biggest shopping center on our side of town and had a great time. After having lunch in the food court, she wanted to have a play in the playground they have. So with her sitting on my lap, I pushed us over and she went and had a blast. After about 15 minutes, she fell over, and since my chair can't fit into the playground, I removed my walking stick from its holder on the side and walked in to make sure she was all right. In enters the entitled parent. After getting my sis to stop crying by joking I'd have to eat her leg now that she'd landed on it, when I joke like that she giggles like mad, I turned to wobble back to my chair only to see it's been moved. It was around three meters away from me where I left it, right by the entrance where parents had left trolleys, prams, etc., and a child was sitting in my seat while her mom spun the chair around. I made my way over and asked for the chair back when entitled mom started on me. Hello, I need my wheelchair back, and you shouldn't have taken it without asking. But you can walk! I was so taken aback by that. Yes, I could walk, but I was obviously struggling to even stand. Excuse me? You can walk, you don't need it, you just want it. I was shocked. As she was saying this, she was raising her voice and people were starting to look. I was firm and told her that while yes, I can walk, I can't do so for very long and need my chair. Well, what's wrong with you then? None of your business. You say you need that chair, but you won't even tell me what's wrong with you. She said it as if I was the crazy one. She reluctantly got her kid off my chair, so I put my stick away and sat back down. My muscles in my legs were agony from having to stand for so long, so I pushed myself back to where my sis and I were set up to try to forget what just happened and rest. As I was going, she was loudly complaining about me to the people around her, claiming I'm lying about needing my chair because I can walk and that I'm just a dull bludger. I got my sis from the playground and left the food court as fast as I could. My sis was upset from the confrontation too, so we went and saw a movie to calm us down. I think it was The Secret Life of Pets we saw. She loved it. I've had people both confront me about walking and demand to know what's wrong with me before, but I've never had a complete stranger take my chair. Please treat people's wheelchairs, walking six walkers as an extension of their body and not something to touch without permission. Thanks for reading. Yeah, seriously guys, you shouldn't just make assumptions about someone based on their appearance. I mean, a lot of disabilities are kind of hidden away from view. Like you wouldn't know this about me from listening, but I have an IQ of 10 and I'm one of the ugliest people on planet Earth. So naturally I'm pursuing a career in YouTube because I fit right in. All right, everyone, that is r slash entitled parents. I would really love to know how you would handle the bus situation. That mother, that child were so persistent. Would you have had this babysitter's patience or would you have snapped and thrown them out the bus? Let me know down in the comments. I'm really curious.